it's hot it's muggy i'm sweating my bag off let's do a video hey everyone i'm russell and this is my off-grid cabin at raspberry rock i got a request recently to show everybody how i do my videos so i thought yeah that sounds like a good thing to do while it's sweltering hot out here um yeah so this is how i do it um this is a typical shot for me i've done um, many shots from this angle and I'll do a reverse now my GoPro doesn't isn't happy with this humidity and the shot might be a little bit hazy but this is pretty much it I set my camera up there the dogs are always nearby right when I'm doing videos of course there's lots to think about like lighting and stuff like that and I always have a challenge doing it outside because I don't like sitting in the sun in fact there there isn't a whole lot of sunlight to sit in around here because there's lots of shade which which I really like but there's always lots of brightness behind me. So I always struggle with that. And you'll see in a lot of videos, I'm kind of dark in my videos. But I mean, I, and I could change, fiddle with the settings and change that so that the I'm a lot brighter, but then the, the background would be washed out. Anyway, I've got a light on order that should fix that. So the camera I'm using over here is my Canon T5i DSLR camera. And if you ask YouTube or you do searches on YouTube, people will tell you this is the best entry level camera yeah 600 bucks for this camera and it does take good video but I'll tell you <laughs> it's really expensive and that's just the beginning the mic uh, this this is a cheap mic that you have to have in windy conditions it was 80 bucks and then you have to have a spare battery you have to have a um, well the charger came with it something to carry it in um, sometimes the lens comes with it. The lens came with it in this case. You have to buy a tripod. Yeah, so you need all this extra stuff. And then that camera isn't very good for doing anything outdoors, like hiking and stuff like that. You can carry them around, and lots of people do, but I find that the GoPro actually works really good for this. The GoPro takes, you know, 1080p video, and it'll do it 30 frames per second. Um, I have a little stand here. And most of the things you see me film outside, unless they're directly around the cabin, like this, uh, in which case I'm using my DSLR, but most things I'm doing, whether I'm on my ATV or remote chainsawing or hiking, I take all with my GoPro and I just kind of run around with it and set up shots. It's pretty inconvenient because it's only got this tiny little stand and sometimes it'd be nice to sit, you know, the camera up higher, but it does work. Now the GoPro, I want to think it was about 350 bucks when I bought it. This is a GoPro Hero 3. Uh, be nice to get something newer. Be nice to be able to standardize on 4K, but for right now I'm all 1080p. So I've done a, a number of shots where I'm sitting up against the post like that. This is how I do it. And this is the problem with being a um, kind of a run and gun shooter. I'm the only person here running the camera sitting in front of it. I often sit down, I look at the display and think, oh, okay, this is absolutely terrible because it's oh I get back up and I try and adjust it maybe like that and then I go sit back here again and go is that good I don't know I might have to adjust it again I might have to stop record and stop again I don't know and then I think oh I look really dark or whatever and then I go <laughs> I have to do bad takes I often start, I'll go, hey guys, I'll be, uh, uh, <laughs> and then I think about it, and then I've got to start again, and, and I, while I often include my bloopers, I call myself One Take Russell, if it's just a dumb, you know, I forgot what to, what to say, it's not very funny, it's not very interesting, you know, I'm, I'm just going to cut it out. Um, the tripod is actually quite nice that it's versatile, I can make it shorter, pretty short until it's, you know, almost couple of feet off the ground or I can make it as tall as me like six feet off the ground which is really nice some of the problems I have with this camera or maybe it's just me um, I usually set it to AV mode um, you can set most people on YouTube will say set it to manual mode because then you can play with the settings and you get the lighting right and you get this right and I find it's really really difficult to do especially with my run and gun style where I might be inside might be outside you know I put it in AV mode and it figures out most of that stuff for me so I really don't have to worry about it other than this this lighting thing which you know manual lighting is not going to fix um, uh, so I said in AV mode and then the focus is always a big problem there's three different focus modes uh, one will track your face although it won't track it very well in this lighting condition 
which is annoying. One's like a multifocus, it kind of looks at everything. That's what I got it on right now. So I'm not even sure what it's focused on. And then one's a, uh, I forget. There's one that tracks your face and there's one that just, you just pick a spot on the screen. Like I'll, it's a touch screen, so I'll just pick there, focus there. And then, uh, and then I'll hold, either I'm standing in that spot or um, I'll focus on say the beam here with that spot when, when that's in focus, then I'll turn the autofocus off, and then I'll sit down and I'll do the video. Because I find that if the video is slightly out of focus, that's better than if it's constantly hunting for focus. And you'll see that where I go blurry and back and blurry and back every now and then. Which is really annoying, and I find that way worse than if uh, the video is very slightly out of focus. So, um, that's that. So I'm, I'm always kind of playing around with the focus, trying to figure out what's best and often I get it out of focus. Every now and then I'll get into the computer, I'll transfer the files over, I'll start looking at them to go, oh, you know, something has happened where I've set the focus for this beam and then I've moved the camera and completely forgotten to reset the focus. And oh, it's so painful, so I gotta come back out and do it. Because I hate, I hate having out of focus clips. I mean, I've done it where I can't reshoot, but I hate doing it. It's one of the things I like about the GoPro, there's no, there's no focus settings on it, it's just auto focus. And everything's in focus, which is nice. And people will say, oh, no, no, you want the you want the cinematic focus where everything in the background is blurry, you know. That's a cinematic. And I'm like, no, no, I want everything in focus. I don't care. <laughs> I can't seem to do that with this camera, though. GoPro, that's why, that's why I really like the, the GoPro. It doesn't take as good a video as that camera, but it's nice that I don't have to play around with the focus. It's Everything's always in focus. Anyway, let's carry on. So how's the focus? <laughs> it's on multi-focus, so I don't know what it's doing. Anyway, this is how I set up my, when I'm doing filming in the kitchen here, I just kind of set the tripod out there, check the display. I've got so much video of me walking back and forth to the camera, <laughs> just adjusting the, the height of the camera or something like that. And, and they'll tell, and you, you ever see videos where people are talking to the camera, but they're actually like this. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but they're talking like da 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 da, and they're like, why aren't you looking at the camera? <laughs> they're watching the display, right? If you ever watch Casey Neistat, you know, he's always wearing sunglasses. And he explained in one video why he always wears sunglasses. It's because he's always looking at the display. <laughs> Which is hilarious, right? So this is how we set up the camera for doing kitchen work. And please ignore all my crap in the background. I'm distilling water because I'm really short and it's really dry. But yeah, I just set the camera up here. Here's one thing I'll mention right now. Every now and then I forget to check if the mic, the mic's battery is low. And I'll ruin a take because there's no there's no audio. I leave this on all the time because if I don't, um, I will forget to turn it on. But of course, the the drawback is I'll forget to check and make sure that the battery hasn't run out. So and then when I'm doing my cooking videos, I switch the camera over here. So I'll set it up just so you can see what it looks like. As I said, please ignore my mess here. It's <laughs> it's too hot to do anything. So I've set up the GoPro here so you can watch what I do. I'm gonna bring the legs in here a little bit. One thing about the GoPro that I always struggle with, you can't, there's no display. You can't tell what you're aiming at. <laughs> you can't just point it and go, ah, it looks okay. So there's always stuff on this desk. And I can always find room. Do that. And then point it down. Why it's so. So I'll do that singular focus where I get a spot on the screen to touch. And I'll focus down here somewhere. And then I'll turn the autofocus off. And then I'm ready to go. Hit the record button and bada boom, bada bing. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that, so I'll move the camera a little bit. Bada boom, bada bing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Did you get that? Careful. So just a couple more things to show you. How am I looking? <laughs> Yeah, so I'm, I'm doing this on purpose so that you can see kind of what I go through, I think. Um, I have a hard time seeing that little display. I wanted to mention that all of my videos done before episode 1.1, I believe, which started January 2017, they were all done with my phone, my Galaxy S5. It takes excellent video. And my only, my only complaint about all the videos I did back then were, well, other than I kind of talked on and on and on and on and on, is that I didn't hold the camera very steady, which could... Would have been helped with some kind of selfie stick or tripod 
that's heavy, right? It restricts the, sh the shaky movement. The heavier, the better. Anyway, I'm going to show you the one other device I have for taking video. I mess everywhere. I'm going to turn it on and stuff. My drone, which I got not that long ago. And the drone camera is actually a really good one. It does 4K, although only in 24 frames per second. It's my only complaint about it, and I should have waited for one that did like 60 frames per second because it's nice to have that high frame rate if you want to do like slow motion, which would also be nice with the uh, the drone. Anyway, I'm gonna start this up, and just we're just gonna take a quick look at filming with it because it is kind of interesting. Filming with this is a pain in the ass for several reasons. One is I gotta take. First, I got to take my phone out of its protective case, which I hate doing. It's a pain to put it back on. Then you got to like plug this little cable in here, which is harder than hell. And then you clamp this in here. All right. We get this started up. Oops. Flying this is actually really, really tricky. And I think my single is so the it's not recording yet, but you can see that the, the camera's on. I don't know how well you can see that. Can't tell if that's focusing at all. So we're going to take off here. Yeah, and immediately Willow gets really excited. By far my single biggest fear with this is hitting a tree, which was why I don't use it very often. This is this is the nicest feature right here, where you be really careful though. It does kind of a pan, a nice circular pan. It's nice and smooth. You just gotta watch it because it'll go and it'll it'll go until it hits something. So you gotta bring it back or stop it or something. But pretty cool, pretty cool device, I gotta say. And this is how I land it when I'm on the deck. Somehow it's in beginner mode. That's it for that thing. So at this point, I take my memory cards out of each device, my drone, my DSLR. I have a spare memory card for each thing, by the way. Um, and my GoPro. I put them into my card reader and I copy the files off onto my PC. Boom, boom, boom.
it's hot, it's it's hot, it's muggy, muggy, I'm sweating my bag off, let's do a video. Let's do a video. So this part is really just about I uh, dragging the files in, cutting and cutting the bits that I actually want out of the out of the raw video. Here I see this was a dead one. Tell me that focused. No, it did. Good. Hey guys, my name is Russell, and so and then I just keep cutting and doing stuff, and sometimes I add some little text bulbs above them, and eventually I get the full video in there. And then once I'm done doing all that crap, I set it to render, and rendering really just compresses it down into a nice video file. It figures out all the text and whatever and creates the actual video fr frame of each video or sorry each frame of the video creates the video and that can take anywhere from say half an hour to two hours to do and then I upload it and that can take anywhere from an hour to six hours to upload depending on again on the length of the video so if I want to upload say one of my episodes my long 45 minute or an hour long episodes on a Wednesday well I got to finish rendering it on a Tuesday and then Wednesday morning first thing I got to upload so I got to kind of plan my day because Uploading a file also kind of kills my internet connection. I can't really do much else while it's doing that Sacrifices, but it's all right And then once it starts uploading, that's when I typically start working on my thumbnail now They say that your thumbnail You know in some 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 channels will spend more time on their thumbnails than they do on the actual videos Because that's how important they are and they say, you know, don't just take a screen dump You know and put some text on it and throw it up. That's what I typically do to do you know, I take a screen dump um, sometimes I'll, I'll go out and I'll try, you know, if there's nothing in the entire video that's, that'll make a good screen dump, then I'll run outside with the camera again with a DSLR and I'll try and find a good, you know, something to do. And even then I don't take pictures. I don't take like high, high def pictures. I will just do a video like a 1080p and, you know, I'll do some stuff or I'll try some different poses and I'll say, okay, and then I'll bring the video back in. I'll take a look at it. And often, you know, I won't find any good, so I'll have to do something else. I'll f find a new location, and I'll do that a little bit until I find a good thumbnail I can take out of the video, a good screen cap I can take out. And then I usually bring it in, um, copy it on, and I'll bring it up in Paint, uh, Paint.net. And once I'm done with paint.net, then I upload it. I can upload it at the same time the video is uploading. And then the only thing left to do, well, there's two things. I will do the title. Uh, you put in the title of the video. I'll do the description of the video. I'll put in the tags. Then that's usually pretty easy. There's, I mean, the t I usually know what the title is before I've gotten that far. The description is really only the first paragraph that goes in the description. Um, uh, because everything else is pre-filled out, I've got it all as a template. The tags are really easy. I just copy and paste tags. I might change a few of them depending on what the video is. And that's pretty much it. I'll schedule a time uh, to put the video in place. Uh, sorry, excuse me. I'll, I'll, I'll schedule a time to publish the video. And it's usually like 3 o'clock or 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard. 
And then the only thing left to do at that point is once the video is done uploading and then it's and YouTube processes it, I don't know what processing means, probably to figure out if there's anything to be demonetized about it. Then once all that's done, I go in and I add the end screens and the uh, the cards that you see throughout the uh, the video. And I usually add three cards. If it's a short video, I'll, I'll just add two cards. And then, um, done. Until the video is finished uploading, or sorry, um, until the video is published and people are watching it and they start commenting, and then I reply to comments. And that's it. Seem to have a bit of zoom action going on. This is typical. I sit down, I go, oh, yeah, I gotta get back up and fix something, but uh, I'm not gonna fix it, <laughs> just so you know. Uh, I just realized I forgot to mention the name of the program I use is Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, which is pretty good. I mean, it's the only one I've ever used. I'm sure any of the major ones would be fine if you wanted to try try them. I think Jaws, JC, boss of the swamp, still uses, what is it, Windows Movie Magic or whatever co what comes with Windows, which is, well, there you go. Um, and then this, I think I mentioned it, Paint.net is the uh, the software I use for doing my thumbnails. Anyway, that's it, guys. i have be sitting here with a lime and lager, but I ran out of beer a couple of days ago. Monday, in fact. I do have one beer sitting around here. It's an IP... It might not be an I forget what it is, but... Um, yeah, there it is, over there. <laughs> i got to put it in the fridge. Uh, and, okay, anyway, I'm done. It's too hard to be talking anymore. Anyway, guys, subscribe and shit, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.